I kept saying that 2019 was going to be a big year for Overwatch, and it certainly turned out to be, but the grand finale is going to be at BlizzCon, and can you believe it? It's just under a month away. All the way, way back in June, we got leaks from Kutaku saying that Overwatch 2 would be announced at BlizzCon, and it would be a Left 4 Dead PvE-style adventure with co-op. And back then, we didn't even know if Roll Queue was coming. It was heavily hinted and leaked, but not confirmed for a while, and I bring that up because in the video that I made, called Overwatch 2 What to Expect, I laid out in detail the pathway that I expected Blizzard to take in order to gear up for a big launch, whatever form Overwatch 2 may take. Because typically what Blizzard does is try to get all their ducks in a row and really clean up the game, give the fans what they want so that they're in a happy state when they release the next product that they want you to buy. They've done this with Diablo, with Reaper of Souls. That eventually went to the console and then the Switch. And now start to tally up the things that we got this year, Roll Queue, New Heroes, the replay system finally added in. And many didn't expect Overwatch to come to the Switch, and that's just 11 days away. Then in a month, Blizzard brings out the big guns, with a BlizzCon aimed to knock our socks off, erasing our memory of the Diablo Immortal debacle, serving up an overwhelming amount of content that we throw our wallets at. So that's the stage that's been set. The major features, they've ramped up to this point. What can we expect going into BlizzCon? Well, if Jason Schreier of Kutako is to be believed, and I do believe him, just like I did with Slasher, whose leaks eventually became validated with Roll Queue, I also do think 100% there's a big sequel or expansion announcement coming next month. But what's more interesting is what else? And that's what we're gonna talk about in today's video. First up, hero content. There is no way that they announce an expansion without more playable characters as well. Anytime they added an expansion to StarCraft, Diablo, World of Warcraft, whatever, they always added a bunch more content. And with Overwatch, yes, that might be a standalone co-op PvE, but alongside that, we should expect at least a new hero, but I think there might be multiple, which might seem kind of crazy, but if you think back to the development of Overwatch, in beta, they released three heroes at once, and over the past year, Blizzard developers keep telling us how many heroes they have in development. If you think back to last year's BlizzCon, the number was up to six. Six full heroes that were far along in development, I'm sure a few of them eventually became Batiste and Sigma, and then later on, upon Sigma's release, it was then again confirmed that there's at least three that are far along in development. Said across multiple different interviews on various websites and live streams, so we know that there's quite a few heroes getting ready. And I always ask myself, what's the point of stockpiling these heroes? You may say to yourself, well, if they decide one is going to fit in the meta in a particular way, maybe they move Move that one a bit more to the forefront, but that doesn't feel really like what they've been doing and is a strategy that they just abandoned after Brigida ushered in her problems for over a year. No, I think instead to liven up the scale of this expansion, we should expect probably three heroes again, just like they dropped in beta. And who do we think are the most likely candidates for that? There's a lot of heroes that are in the forefront of our minds that seem obvious to be coming out eventually or just flat out confirmed to be heroes anyway with a TBA release date on them. For example, Maga is my favorite in the cast. I was a bit heartbroken when we got Sigma instead of him, and it would feel weird to admit to have a hero that's this far along in development amp up his storyline and then never return. But we just got a new tank, and they do like to alternate the types of heroes we get between releases. But again, if we get multiple, that wouldn't be a problem. But it's not like Blizzard hasn't strung us along awaiting a hero's release. Echo was announced last year's BlizzCon, basically confirmed that she will be a hero. And I don't know, what do you guys think? Is a full year in between a character's announce long enough for Blizzard to finally pull the trigger on releasing them? Sounds long, but perhaps not because characters like Wrecking Ball or Sojourn were in development prior to Overwatch's release. Sojourn also was a character in the Storm Rising mission, which introduced this scary Omnic guy that's working with Talon, but seems to have his own agenda. And in the background of all of this, the Junkertown Queen is years old at this point. And really, it wouldn't be a surprise if Blizzard decided to release one or multiple of these fan favorite concepts at once at BlizzCon. And digging even a bit deeper, there's more characters in the Overwatch lore. There's characters like Sanjay Corporal, who looks like a good guy working for Vishkar. Then he gets shown later on at the Talon super secret bad guy meeting, showing us that anybody can be a double agent at any point. This is assumed to be Liao, who was mistaken to be in this early Overwatch photo 
looks just like him, but was confirmed not to be him in a interview years ago. And he also works with talent, apparently, because this is his signature haircut at the bottom of this frame. Keep in mind that Moira also can be seen hidden off to the side in these talent meetings far before her release date at BlizzCon two years ago. The last few candidates might be Maximilian. However, he seems to be more of a plot character to me, but I could see be worked into a type of a offensive support Port, similar to Zenyatta, like the evil version of him. They always could toss in a character from the Mecha Squad, a counterpart hero in D.Va's crew, as long as their playstyle was different enough, could be added to any of the roles really, but might seem more of the same if in a single hero release and would feel a bit better in a package deal like I think they're going to do. As we get later down into this list, these heroes become less and less likely in my opinion. And then of course, there's another set of clues that I want the entire community to keep their eyes peeled at, and that is the balance changes. And it might seem crazy to say, well, how can balance changes tell you what the next hero is going to be? Well, there's been a few times where they've snuck in small small changes to prepare us for a hero that hasn't come out yet and seemed odd at the time, but makes sense when you envision the next layer of the game that's about to come out that Blizzard knows is coming, but we don't yet. Some of these can be really hard to tell and they don't always telegraph it ahead of time, but sometimes they do. So for example, when Doomfist came out, Roadhog was still quite the damage dealer and did way more burst damage with his weapon. I think some of us might say, well, with Rolock, maybe we could see that get reverted. It was pretty fun to play that way back then. Might do something about the double shield meta, but regardless, because he would have been so devastating to Doomfist, they made Roadhog a bit more of a brawly, tanky character and took some of his damage away. This was before Doom was released, mind you. It felt weird at the time, but they eventually got it through. Other major changes that they made, the entire knockback rework was put into place when Batiste was coming out this year, making it seem like Blizzard wanted you to have reliable knockbacks to displace you out of the immortality field so that it had more outplay. You can think to Symmetra with her big rework most recently to be able to charge off barriers. Perhaps that was looked to, to be an answer to Sigma, who was going to come out later. Speaking of Sigma, the 12% ult charge rate nerf might seem healthy for the game overall, but maybe it was even more important to put in with Sigma, who has one of the most powerful ultimates in the game. And although this new PTR patch that's coming out in the Halloween event this Tuesday with the dive tank buffs and the barrier tank nerfs might look like it's directly meta related, but perhaps a buff like they're giving to Tracer with much bigger range isn't just to deal with this meta, but has to do with the next hero that's coming. Who really knows? But it's something to think about whenever there's any patch change that looks like it doesn't fit with the current state of the game and can help us sort of theory craft towards what hero might come out. This is too much for my tiny brain to handle, but if any of you in the comment section down below can patch together any of the recent balance adjustments to play styles that we could expect in any of the heroes that I mentioned earlier in the video, let us know in the comment section down below. Otherwise, other content that we can expect, let's look back to the past two years at BlizzCon. 2017 gave us the Reinhardt cinematic, the new map Blizzcon, Blizzard World, and the new hero, Moira. Last year in 2018, we got the McCree cinematic who introduced us Echo and Ash, who became the new hero as well that year. So then what do we think we're getting this year for BlizzCon 2019? For sure, another animated short. It's too easy for them to play it on the big screen. I think for sure we're going to get one. The only question is, is it going to be down to lore like the rest have, or will it be ushering in the Overwatch sequel? Those could be two different things. And perhaps we even get one for each. Because unless it's just a very rudimentary Overwatch with a two next to it as the announcement, you'd think they'd want to hype it up a bit, right? Maybe setting the stage for whatever PvE mission and context of what's going on. Are you playing with Overwatch? Are you Talon? Can you be either or? Is there set single player missions? I assume that would be in a cinematic trailer. But if I had to pick one character that I think is most likely to feature in a cinematic this year, it would be Zenyatta. 
because he's a character that constantly gets asked by the devs when we're getting the Zen lore. They keep saying soon TM, and with how many times they've said it, I think there's a good chance that a lore-based cinematic would be about Zenyatta. He's one of the most popular characters for support players to play, sort of a bridge point between DPS and, okay, I'll pick heals, but really I just want to damage, beloved among the player base as well as the developers themselves. So that's where my money's at. Let me know your guess in the comment section down below. And what else could be coming in conjunction with the Switch release of Overwatch? This is an awesome fan-made highlight intro for Link, who shapes up to look like like an awesome Overwatch character. You'd think if there was going to be any Nintendo characters put into Overwatch for the Switch release, we would have heard about it already, but with the release of the game on Switch just a few weeks before BlizzCon goes live, there might be a special one-two punch in the works. Way back when in the GameCube days, I remember Soul Calibur 2 having a different character for each console that it came out to. I personally doubt this type of thing would happen because I think many of us as fans would be quite upset because whatever Nintendo character wouldn't be available on the other platforms, you can guarantee that. But at the same time, I'm surprised there hasn't been more crossover at play with Nintendo. I'm anticipating another announcement beyond the pure release of the game on the console. And what could it be? I'm not sure. Don't think it's going to be an exclusive hero though. But in this article posted by Boo on the Overwatch subreddit, finds that Sony already has the technology for crossplay. Maybe crossplay across consoles to in bolden the player base could be in the works we'll have to see one fairly obvious addition that you would expect though is an overwatch character to come to super smash brothers everybody else has a character in that game and when jeff kaplan was asked about this by ign he answered that all the heroes are their babies so it's hard to choose a single one of them but if he had to pick one he'd choose tracer different developers have given different answers to this question across different interviews but generally seem down with the idea overall i was pretty surprised that the release of Overwatch on the Switch was announced to very little fanfare for the middle of October when they could have just waited to announce that at BlizzCon, but maybe they assumed it would get drowned out in the hype, and that would make sense seeing as we know that they're probably bringing out some huge announcements for the BlizzCon weekend, so much so that they were able to put the official Switch announcement quite a bit earlier, giving me even more confidence that this BlizzCon is going to be big. Because think about it, last year, they would have loved to have the Switch announcement. The whole of BlizzCon was kind of struggling for content. So to burn it kind of early, I think is a pretty telling sign. That's all for BlizzCon. For you lore fans out there, it looks like a full novel is coming in 2020. Medieval Dragon posted this link to Reddit, and it shows off that there is a Amazon posting for a new Overwatch book called The Hero of Numbani. You can pre-order it now, and it looks to detail the story of Effie. She's the young girl genius who invented Orisa, the AI robot who is like a souped up personable version of the OR-15 defense robots that Doomfist smacked around with E. Well, this one will detail the backstory of how that all came to be. According to the article, the author, Nikki Drayden, is a writer who's been featured in the New York Times and the Wall Street Journal. And although she isn't as decorated as Alyssa Wong, who is the writer of What You Left Behind, the Batiste short story, with that incredible bar set for Overwatch lore, I can't really see this novel taking a step back from that. And judging on how Jeff has talked about the comics and the lore in general in Overwatch, they very subtly have said that they weren't pleased with it overall, and instead were focused on this new direction on their lore, which kicked off with the Bastet short story as well as the Batiste one, and now apparently is moving ahead with full force with a full-on novel, which seems pretty cool. Last thing for the video, Josh Engen, who works for Blizzard in various different roles, it seems to change every time I check, but he tweeted this out from the Grand Finals, and it's a picture of Jeff Kaplan climbing the stands in order to reach a fan who asked for a photo, which in its own right is just an adorable piece of Jeff Kaplan being himself. But the funny part about this is a comment that he highlighted saying, Overwatch patch notes, fixed a bug that allowed Jeff Kaplan to reach unintended locations. <laughs> okay, uh, nerd humor. I like it. And if you like it too, be sure to leave the video a like because it really helps us out. Let us know in the comment section down below your theories of exactly what we're going to be getting in a month at BlizzCon. And if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon so that you actually get notified when our videos go live. Link to the description is our Twitter where we tweet out news updates and dank memes. That's been it for me. I've been Frito for your Overwatch. We'll see you guys next time.